Last of Us is a thrilling game that lets you use a wide variety of weapons to take down anyone in your way. I'm sure everyone has their own favorites, but I sought to find out which weapon is the best. Laying down the ground rules, I wanted to play on Grounded Plus for maximum difficulty, and so I would have every weapon available from the start. I only played with one weapon at a time, and I would switch weapons every time I died. Here's a list of each weapon available. For the sake of this video, I also included melee and throwables as two additional weapon types. I managed this by making minor adjustments to the Python script I used for my random filters video. I also decided to turn on infinite ammo because I didn't think I could rely on ammo drops for this challenge. Jumping right in, the first random weapon happened to be the pistol, which is kind of boring since it's what you start out with anyway, but don't worry, it doesn't last that long. Although, given my track record, it lasted longer than expected. Next up is my favorite weapon. Also, why is Ellie more useful than Tess? I ended up making it pretty far with the flamethrower until my brain just shut down and tried to reload instead of run for some reason. The revolver lasted through the rest of Boston and all the way up until the graveyard in Billstown. Pardon me, just gonna squeeze on through here. We can just pretend I went straight from the revolver to the El Diablo. Should I say the El Diablo or just El Diablo? Anyway, I was able to make it all the way through the rest of Bill's town with it. I was starting to worry that having infinite ammo made it too easy. Silly me, forgetting that there's always Pittsburgh. I obviously made it through with no problems at all. I eventually made it to my first non-firearm experience. It was slow going but turned out fine until I learned a lesson in object permanence. Fun fact, even if you look away from a shotgun, it's still there and it's still deadly. Time for my best friend El Diablo. These guys are no match for the quickest draw in the Northeast. He's got a rifle. Ellie, it's cute that you think I'm listening to your hints. I know this is Pennsylvania, but it's starting to feel like Hotel California, because I can't seem to leave. I finally thought I was free, but I was betrayed by my own challenge. I accidentally picked up a smoke bomb, so when I went to aim, I had the wrong weapon equipped. The integrity of this challenge is very important to me, so I stuck to my word and refused to throw it, even if it meant paying for a late checkout. I finally made it out of the hotel and into the financial district, where dreams go to die. This gave me my first opportunity to use throwables, and I figured infinite crafting is essentially the same thing as infinite ammo, so I went ahead and turned that on too. Now, I would like to sincerely apologize to all of my fans. I placed nail bombs out expecting to clear this level and without taking into account checkpoints. I tried to kill people before they reached the nail bombs to keep it clean, but you should know by now, I don't really have skills and I would have had to restart the entire encounter to get rid of the bombs. The integrity of this challenge is very important to me. Shout out to Ellie for getting the final kill in Financial District. Moving on, here's a lovely compilation of me losing my sanity. I tried everything. I tried going quiet. I tried going loud. I tried killing everyone, no one, and any amount in between. At one point, I just wanted it to be over, so I gave in and doubled it. The integrity of this challenge is very important to me. Whoa. Get him. 
After a couple attempts, I made it through, but this was so sloppy, I feel like I didn't even deserve to make it through here. Also, I love how this makes it seem like Joel is raging at the parking meter. Luckily, I made it through with the flamethrower. I am unstoppable with it. I hate the assault rifle, but I discovered that if I just hide in this corner, the enemies just filter in through the door. Unfortunately, you do have to exit at some point. When we got to the bar, I cleaned up, but Ellie apparently felt threatened by a mini fridge. The sewers were mostly uneventful, but that brings us to the suburbs. Luckily, I made it through on my first, second, okay, sixth try. I tried getting the sniper with a nail bomb, but whatever proximity-based sensor Joel somehow uses for these didn't seem to work here. Thanks, Joel. Pretty much the entire next chapter was trivial with throwables. Sorry, Tommy. Just brush it off. I got a little too confident here. I was caught off guard by this one guy who survived the nail bomb and was too slow to switch to anything I could throw. Unfortunately, there was nothing I could do about the bomb I had already placed without restarting the whole encounter. The integrity of this challenge is very important to me. Going to college was fun, but this right here is why I don't record audio while playing. I didn't think I was going to make it out, and I was definitely panic yelling the entire time. As much as I love the flamethrower, I really wish I had something with better range. There we go. I want everyone to know that I showed every single shot I took here. There weren't any misses lost in the edit. Maybe I'm actually learning how to aim. JK. Now Joel, I'm gonna need you to remember that while you're bleeding out, you were using the El Diablo. It's finally Ellie's turn. You're forced to use the bow on the deer, so there's not really much to talk about here. Now, I've never considered myself a doomsday prepper, but I mean, come on, Ellie. Who doesn't have a couple nail bombs and molotovs already made and waiting in their backpack? You weren't kidding. You're a better shot with that thing than I am. David, please. <laughs> Crafting takes kind of a while, so at one point I was just running around letting David do all the work. Despite some close calls, I made it pretty far, but not quite to the bloater. Maybe I can get there with the pistol. Oh, okay. <laughs> bloater, more like boater, am I right? Oh, brother. Wow, no. Boo. I would like to submit this as my application to do the pyrotechnics at Disneyland. Unfortunately, David takes Ellie's weapons along with her innocence, so this section was kind of just a free-for-all. David, this is what you get for ruining my challenge. Damn it, Joel, I told you to remember El Diablo. There we go, much better. I don't even know the last time I died just running through here. Okay, that's a wall. Guess who just realized their usual route requires at least one stealth kill? No worries, at least we have old reliable. That's right, I'm talking about Ellie. Although, the revolver certainly helped.
Only a couple bad decisions later, and I made it to everyone's favorite post-apocalyptic surgeon. The game wouldn't let me throw a Molotov, so I had to do the next best thing. I finally made it to Ellie and Joel's deep conversation at the end of the game. <sighs> In this playthrough, I gained a much greater appreciation for the revolver. I also gained an appreciation for the game developers who decided to leave the assault rifle for only the final level. It got to the point that I was dreading seeing the name pop up. I even learned to appreciate Ellie as an ally. Yeah, come here, Ellie. Okay. In total, I died 57 times in less than six hours on this run. This will probably be my last part one video for a little bit, but let me know if there's anything you'd like to see me try on part two. Thanks for watching. It's pretty goddamn stupid.